Okay, so I'm going to start this drawing from the very beginning and we're going to set out all the measurements you can see there um, drawing them as though we've taken the measurements ourselves. So we're not going to insert the PDF into AutoCAD as you know you can do uh, so we don't want to be just tracing, we want to work out those measurements. So I'm going to start AutoCAD 2015, make sure you're not using AutoCAD architecture and it should start pretty quickly okay and then you should be able to click on the start button uh, to start new drawing or start drawing over on the left there but if you're not sure of the template that you are using you can click on the drop down list below and make sure it's got ACAD ISO selected not ACAD the ACAD ISO is the one set up for metric and start a new file that way right so we've got a sheet and uh, just to go back to this drawing um, even if you haven't taken measurements yourself often uh, as a starting point you'll be given drawings of the the building done by people who've worked on it previously which will often maybe be not maybe dimensioned as much as this but in a pretty similar format and you'll then know the scale and the sheet size so we know this is at 1 to 100 we know the page is A3 so I'm going to show you a little trick you can use to get started and give you a frame of reference in AutoCAD and so what I'm going to do is draw a rectangle clicking on the rectangle tool 0 comma 0 is going to be my first corner enter and then you know, think about the size of an A3 page so remember the size of the exactly 420 so 420 and then remember it's at 1 to 100 so I'm going to add two more zeros so 42,000 comma 297 00 enter and you'll see then if I try to zoom out I can't zoom all the way and this is a common issue you'll have with AutoCAD when you start drawing that's why you can regen or just double click with the wheel and that'll do a zoom extents which will fit it into the into the screen anyway but yeah regen is a good good option too yeah yeah so then you know what you're going to draw should fit into that um, that border so with the rectangle yeah, on the home tab yeah for the dimensions of A3 times 100 so type 0 comma 0 for your start point just type 0 comma 0 don't click anywhere 0 comma 0 enter and then 42,000 comma 297 0 0 yeah comma 297 yeah 0 0 enter yeah and then just double click with the wheel press escape first just press escape because you don't need to press enter there just press escape and then double click with the wheel that the wheel, the middle button on your mouse. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so so that gets around 42 three zeros and then 29700. Zero, zero. Yeah, yeah. We might delete that page in the end because we'll do the page with the layouts, but again, just gives you a good starting point for zooming and things like that. So now, um, probably what you want to do here is just watch what I'm doing rather than try to follow through the steps. I'm going to go pretty quickly, but uh, I'm going to just cover the main method and explain to you why I've given the dimensions to you in this way, and you should then have a good idea how you would work it out yourselves. So notice that I've got the, um, the length of this wall at the bottom and the length of the wall on the right 
uh, given with the dimensions there, and we're, we're assuming that those walls are straight. And that's really the way you should try and always set out your plans. If you have walls that are at right angles to each other, or that you can pretty safely assume are, are close enough to being a right angle, have those parallel with the side of your page. And so, coming back into here, I'm going to draw a line. So notice I'm not even worrying about layers yet. I'm just going to get a rough outline and I'll worry about layers afterwards. So I'm going to draw a line, starting roughly on the page where I want that corner of the building to be. So over here, and then, sorry, better maximise AutoCAD, and I'll do a line again, starting, and then, do you remember how to make lines straight? Hopefully you'll... Also, that's right, so F8 on the keyboard or the right angle symbol down below. I'm going to take it up and just make sure that's a vertical line. Enter to finish, and then enter and repeat the last command, and I can start a new line at the bottom of the one I've just drawn and take it over to the left. So notice I haven't given a length for either of those lines yet. I could have done that, but you don't even have to. All I'm trying to do there is establish a right angle. And so that is this corner of the building. And so then we've got the length 20220. So that's up to this corner point here. So what I can do to establish that is offset 20220. From this line, I'm going to click above. I'm not going to worry about filling yet because we, that's no point. And uh, then again, looking at the reference drawing, we want to come across now 1840, 18 metres and 40 mil. So 180, uh, sorry, that's not right. Oh, sorry, yeah, 18 metres, yeah, and 40 mil. Uh, so again, offset 18, or 180, 40, 180, 40. And I'm going to select this line on the left and click. And again, not worry about joining them together yet because the walls that come out from the ends here are at angles. So now comes the tricky part, thinking about how it's all going to be um, referenced, or which lines are going to be reference lines and which lines are going to be walls. So this dimension here now is 2120. I'm going to offset again, 2120 from this line and I'm going to come down. So we almost know where the corner on this side of the building is because we know that from this corner here down to somewhere on this line is the other corner of the building. But we don't know where on this line yet because we need to offset using this dimension, 2285, to get the distance from this corner up to this one. So again, 2285 is my distance, and then from here, across. Right, so I'm going to extend this line across, just by selecting it, I'll use the grips there to extend that across. So that intersection point is where those two walls meet. So now is a good time to start thinking about the layers, because I want the layers, I want things to be broken up now and organised a bit more. So I'm going to go into the Layer Manager using Layer Properties there. And uh, mine's just gone off the screen, that's annoying. Just fix that. Okay, so I'm going to make a new layer. Call it A uh, Set Out or Reference. We'll call it A Ref. Just getting into the way that Revit might name things as well. And then a uh, wall for now is enough. We'll break it up into different walls later. And I'll just change the colours there so they're different and we can see when things are on different layers. So I'll make this a nice bright colour for the reference lines. And then the walls will make the colour of uh, brick, but so you can see it on the projector, I'll make it uh, a bit lighter. So I'm going to make that the current layer, the wall layer. And I'm going to draw a line now from this corner here 
turn off ortho so you can see it a bit better down to the intersection and then down to this one here. So that is giving us the outside face of these main walls. So if you can see where the dimensions run to, it's to the corner point each time, the outside corner point, not to any of those internal points. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so now I can change these other lines. I'm going to keep them. So the lines I did previously, I'm going to put onto the reference layer, and ah, that one as well. And then I might just extend these out and. This one as well, so that those lines just poke out from the end, because they'll be useful later as a reference, and you'll see see why. Uh, so then I can just draw some new lines in for the walls themselves, just basically going over where those lines did previously, and I'll fillet them together, uh, just making sure my fillet radius is zero, it should always be at first, and oops, so you can see then that's the outline of the building, so the outer face, and then you can see that luckily I've rounded off the wall thicknesses to 300, in reality they're a tiny bit less than that, but we'll just say that they're 300, and that'll be close enough for this project, so offset 300, I'm going to come in from each of those walls, I know people will sometimes think about joining these into polylines. It's it's more effort than it's than it's worth for this. And then notice that with the bottom edge, the bottom wall, you've got two lots of um, wall thickness. So it's going to be another 300, and then on on this face as well. So I'm going to bring those in an extra time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So now I've got the inside face of that wall established and I can use fillet again now to join the inner lines. And then the next part, I'm going to go a little bit more quickly again. So this part you really just won't, probably watch what I'm doing, it'll be difficult to follow along um, because uh, the method is a bit more complicated as well. Uh, so, starting with the bottom edge, you can see that we've got these divisions. So, it's uh, from the corner there, a metre and then 4860 and then a metre again and then the same measurement. So, what you should do there is draw a line from the outer corner or extend this reference line down if you like, that can be used if I turn ortho on. So you can hopefully see how useful these reference lines are. And now I'm going to offset a thousand. And then I'm going to bring this down so that it doesn't project all the way through the building because it's really only necessary for that bottom part of the building. So just to make things tidy. And then the measurement coming across is 4680. And now I can copy those two lines using the first line as my base point and just bringing it across. Snapping each time is going to set them out the same measurement. So you can see there, well I'll just prove it to you, if I check that last measurement, uh, where's, my, where's my measure button, from that intersection to the corner it should be exactly a thousand, and it is. So then, I can use tools like Trim and Extend, and AutoCAD is far quicker than Revit when you're doing things like this. So we need the, um, well starting on, on this side, so we need that outer line and uh, the inner line broken. We don't need that middle line anymore, so I'm going to delete 
it from this edge and then using trim select all those reference lines as cutting edges and just trim in between uh, 4680 uh, another little trick there I can bring those reference lines down using stretch so there are different ways of doing this just do it the way that is easiest for you I've just brought those down so that I can then uh, draw some more lines on a different layer on my wall layer and I'll copy that across so the main idea there is that you're using references to establish those measurements first before trying to draw the walls um, the size you need so that's the easy one because those are perpendicular and parallel to the wall we were just working on but this wall's at an angle so you've got to do something extra here and this is the real trick okay so we want to measure again to get that one meter pier that you have between the windows so how do we measure along perpendicular to that line that I've drawn at the angle well yeah no way it's, it's not that obvious at first but uh, and in Revit it would be different again but an easy way in AutoCAD or a way maybe not that easy but a way you can do it is to draw a line starting out in space I'll turn ortho off here so you can see what's happening I want to have that go perpendicular to the wall face so notice it's giving me the perpendicular symbol because in my object snap settings here I've got perpendicular turned on so you need perpendicular to be on would you not just offset that back line that's left out you actually want to no because it's not perpendicular to the line I'm working on so that, that wall there yeah. is at a different angle so to what I'm creating oh. so can you add on the no, no we can work it all out with the distances so we just drawing in a new line here and I'll show you when this line's drawn then I'm going to move it from here up to the corner it's probably hard to tell but that line is at a slightly different angle to this one so it shows you this is not a perfect right angle and that's often going to be the case when you have situations like this where you have some walls that are at right angles but other walls at different angles and the resulting angle between those new angled walls is often not going to be a right angle yeah sure yeah sure so the, the secret is draw a new line just starting at a random point out in space and make sure it goes perpendicular to the wall you're trying to set out from so you've got your right angle yeah that's right yeah slightly off but it would be I guarantee it a different angle yeah yeah, so it's just those little subtleties you've got to watch out for because we don't care about the angle of this wall when we're drawing the windows what's important is that the, wind, the edge of the windows is exactly at a right angle to this wall so that's the essential thing and it's a really common technique you'll need to use when you're working with walls that are at different angles just getting something at a right angle to them so by drawing that line now I can use the move tool I've selected the line I'm going to click the move button pick it up on the end and then snap it onto that corner and so this line really is another set out line so I'm going to move it onto my reference layer and now just like before I can use offset and it's a thousand just like the other wall for the piers and then again offset with the second distance four seven four five okay so I've got the that's the width between our piers and the windows are going to fit inside that that space but we'll do the windows afterwards so I'm going to select those two lines and show you the little trick with copy that you might want to try as well so notice I didn't select the first one I'm going to use that to set it out but I haven't selected it I've just selected the two lines that I want to copy I'm going to click on the copy button and snap from that first line and that's the thing that's maybe not obvious that it's setting out so notice how it's picked up the lines set out from 
the one that I've selected. So if you think about it, it's a meter from the thing that I've selected. It's a meter back. And that means if I snap onto the end of this line now, we know that the new lines are exactly a meter from it. And each time we can just repeat that, and we've got the same situation now from here to the corner should again be, if we measure it, exactly, well, in fact this one is not exactly a thousand. But close enough. Sorry? Oh yeah, sorry, okay, so, um, yeah, so I, I forgot that. Yep, so there, okay, so what you'd need to do there is, uh, sorry, I drew this and I totally forgot that. So, um, okay, so it's easier there to use offset to get that extra line. And yeah, so those measurements are, are rounded off. It is pretty close to 4750, and I made that middle one different, uh, and you'll see why when you get to the end. So 4750. Four, five. Oh, sorry, a thousand first, and then four, seven, four, five. We'll make it fairly close to a thousand. But again, when you're working with angled measurements like this, you'll find things often again end up slightly off. So there, it's a thousand and three, which is close enough. And when they're building it uh, with angles like this, they'll always um, allow for things like that so that's that's standard and so now again I can uh, draw the lines for my walls just by drawing one and copying it using those reference lines there we go and then with trim it's good practice selecting your cutting edges if you're in the habit of using the um, shortcut and pressing enter to make everything a cutting edge um, it's good to uh, think about using cutting edges that you've selected which is what I'm doing there so I selected the cutting edges before pressing enter And there we are, so that's that wall done as well. And that's the drawing process you should follow whenever you set out a building. So start with the overall size of the building, do the external wall, walls first, and then drill down into the detail, so the internal walls would be next, and then in any other internal um, elements. In fact, so the columns in most buildings would be the next thing even before you do the internal walls. But our columns here, um, which are structural, are placed in a bit of a random, almost sort of higgledy-piggledy way, so they'll be actually set out afterwards. So I've got the internal walls dimensioned there, and I'll go through the set out for the columns with another drawing that we that we'd look at later. So if you get the external walls done, uh, have a look at doing the internal walls there using the methods I've just shown you. So these walls remember are parallel and perpendicular to this wall at the top. These walls here are parallel to the side and perpendicular to this, this wall over here. So I'll let you have a go at doing those. So I'll just finish the video there.